You asked, so I'm gonna answer the top beginner saltwater aquarium questions. Question number one. I can't seem to get my tank temperature above 74 degrees. Is my room too cold or do I have a faulty heater? Well, honestly, it could be either one. First of all, what temperature do you keep your room at? This small heater that comes with the Hello Reef kit is really meant for rooms that are at typical room temperature, somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees. So if your tank is quite a bit cooler, then it may be having an issue keeping warm. But how would you know that? Well, luckily on the Eheim Jaeger heater, there's a little red light that tells you when the element is on and then when it's off, obviously. So what you can do is just look into your rear filtration chamber and see if you can see the light. If the light is on all the time, then that means it's probably working in overdrive. But if you wanna check even a little bit better, what you can do is when that red light is on, just put your hand around the heater and you should feel that it's quite warm. If it's not warm, you probably have a broken heater, but if it is warm, then your room is probably too cold and you just need to up the size. I forget which size heater comes with the Hello Reef kit, but I think it's the 50 watt. So if that's the case and your room temperature is like 64 degrees, then just go up one size to the 75 watt and that should solve your problem. Question number two, I'm trying to build an aquascape and keep it stable, but the included epoxy isn't sticky at all. Help. I remember building my first aquascape and being so incredibly frustrated because the epoxy didn't stick. I just figured or assumed that I was doing something wrong, but then I learned what epoxy is good for and what it's not good for and how that's different than something like a super glue. Epoxy isn't going to be sticky on the rock. Yeah, it might stick to your hands, but it's not meant to act like a glue to kind of stick your pieces of rock together. What it's meant to do is create a structure around your rock that once it hardens into an almost cement-like consistency will contain that rock. So honestly, to get the most out of that epoxy, what you need to do when attaching two pieces together is you need to get your finger in there or a spoon in there or a knife in there and spread it as much as you can so that it touches both rocks. So if you have two rocks, and you put the epoxy in the middle, then make sure you're spreading it onto the nooks and crannies of rock one and rock two. Then you need to wait until it hardens. I'd say wait at least an hour, but it doesn't fully set for 24 hours. All that being said, it's not like super glue. So it's not meant to be like lifted and pushed around and like it's gonna stay together because it just won't. But if it's already stable, then that epoxy will secure those two pieces together by creating a hard surface around them. If you are looking for something stickier right out of the bat, what you can do is use epoxy and super glue together. Basically, if you have two rocks like this, you would put your layer of epoxy and then you would put extra thick super glue on both sides of the epoxy and then put those pieces together. That super glue will set a lot quicker and give you that stickiness you were looking for, while the long-term effect of that epoxy will help keep those two pieces of rock in place. Question number three, I'm ready to buy my fish but can't find the $20 gift card. Okay, for all of you who are watching this who don't have a Hello Reef kit, the Hello Reef kit comes with a $20 gift card, but it's not a physical gift card, it's a digital gift card that unlocks. And I wrote it down, it unlocks at challenge 28A. So if you haven't gotten to challenge 28A yet, don't worry, the gift card is waiting for you. And if for some reason you missed it, just go back and check in on challenge 28A. You just fill out some information and then a digital gift card will be sent your way. Question number four, do I need a screen top for my tank? No, no, you don't need one. Do I have one on my tank? Yes. Clownfish aren't typically jumpers, but they can jump. So to be super sure, you're probably gonna wanna pick up a screen top. You can DIY something yourself if you're kind of handy. There's plenty of videos on YouTube how to do that. Or you can just buy a pre-made mesh screen from Innovative Marine. If you get the 15 gallon Nuvo Fusion size, that will fit basically perfectly on your Hello Reef tank. Question number five. I added Dr. Tim's to my tank and two days later, it's still cloudy. Did I do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. What can happen during the cycling process is a bacterial bloom. And when you add Dr. Tim's to your tank, what you're doing is you're adding bacteria. Now, most of the time that bacteria bloom will settle really quickly and will clear up on its own. But 
Since we did things like pull out the filter sock, it may take a little bit longer. So just be patient with it. That cloudiness is definitely just a bacterial bloom. Give it a little bit of time. It should disappear in a few days, maybe up to a couple weeks, but it's not doing any damage and you're not doing anything wrong. Question number six, my cleanup crew members are dying, help. Yeah, that is super lame and unfortunately can happen, especially when setting up new tanks. There's a lot of reason cleanup crew members can die. The ammonia can be too high. The nitrite can even be too high. Typically it's the ammonia though. And um, they might not be getting enough food or the kind of food they need, or they could honestly be hunting each other. For example, hermit crabs usually live peacefully, but if they need a larger shell, then you better believe they're gonna go after a snail, kill it, and then take their shell. So that could be one of the reasons they're dying. Another reason is there could be some sort of ammonia spike happening during the cycle. If that's the case, just do some ammonia testing using one of the test kits we recommend. If it's above 0.5, that's likely the answer. If it's below that, it could be the nitrite. Another thing is the right kind of food. Oftentimes, if we add a cleanup crew to a tank too early, then there's just not enough food. For example, a lot of snails like to scour the rock work and the glass work all day long, and they're constantly eating that film algae. But if you put snails in a brand new tank, then there's just not gonna be that algae there for them, so they could starve to death. If that's the case, what you can do is you can always buy Hikari algae wafers, drop one of those in the tank, and that will last for a long time. Actually, when I've done it for this tank here, I usually break it up and drop in a half max because a little bit of those algae wafers goes a long way in the system. But one thing I would definitely recommend since your clean crew members are dying, wait a couple weeks, test your water, and do a large water change. Make sure the nitrogen cycle is stabilized, that the ammonia is back to zero before adding another cleanup crew member in. That should solve the problem. Question number seven. My tank is evaporating a ton of water and my salinity keeps getting higher. So I think what's happening is you keep adding salt water back to the tank. Don't worry, it's a super common beginner mistake. But once you have the salinity dialed in at 1.026 or 35 parts per thousand, as long as you're refilling the tank with filtered water, RO water, RODI water, fresh water basically, then that salinity should stay exactly the same. But if your salinity keeps getting higher and higher and higher, you're probably adding salt water to the tank when topping it off. The thing about evaporation is the salt doesn't evaporate, only the water evaporates. So if you keep pouring salt into your tank every day as the water goes down and down, then yes, the salinity is gonna increase day by day. So just correct that one mistake and add filtered fresh water and not salt water and your tank should be stable. If your tank is still high, sitting somewhere around 40 parts per thousand, if there's no animals in it yet, then just do a couple large water changes and that will get the number back down. But if there are animals in it, then you wanna slowly lower that salinity over the course of maybe a few weeks. You can do that by taking out a gallon of salt water and adding back in a gallon of salt water, but make sure that the salinity is just a little bit lower and that will slowly and safely lower it for your animals. Question number eight, when do I put the bag of activated carbon back in? Yes, this is a very common question, especially for those who were early adopters of the Hello Reef kit because we didn't mention it very well. So you take out the carbon right at the beginning. You don't put it in the tank. And then we don't tell you to put it back in all the way until week five, I think, maybe week four. Whenever you add your clownfish is when you're gonna add it back in. The carbon is really good at removing smells, at removing colors, and removing chlorine chloramines from the tank. Really, in an established tank, we use that activated carbon to keep our water super clear looking, and that's why we wait until we add the fish, then we add in that bag of activated carbon. Activated carbon has a pretty short lifespan just because it's super porous and it gets clogged up really easily. So when you add your clownfish into the tank, you're gonna add that packet of activated carbon, but every couple weeks, you're probably gonna wanna change it out with some fresh carbon just to keep the tank smelling lovely and super crystal clear. Question number nine, is it bad to extend the length of the light schedule? No, it's not bad, but it could have some consequences that you may not like. For example, with the Hello Reef tank, we set up the AI Blade light to run 10 hours a day. That's a perfect length of time for the settings we chose for lighting your anemone and giving them the food they need. 
The problem is if you start extending that period too long, what can happen is you can encourage a lot more nuisance algae growth. I mean, if you go from 10 hours to 20 hours, that's gonna be a big problem. It's gonna provide too much light and too much food basically for your anemones, which could be detrimental. It's also gonna create a ton of nuisance algae growth. So if you're at 10 hours and you wanna go to 12 hours, that's probably gonna be fine. 14 hours, you're definitely gonna be pushing it. 16 hours, that's gonna be way too long. What I'd recommend instead if you want to have a longer daylight schedule is just adjust the sunrise and sunset time. So if you'd like to have good viewing time in the evening, rather than have a go from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., just adjust those times by a few hours so that maybe it runs from noon until 10 p.m. That way you're keeping that same 10 hour day, but you're able to set it so that you can get the most viewing pleasure when you're around your tank. Question number 10. I'm going out of town for a few days and want to get an auto top off unit. Would the sensor go in the display tank or return pump chamber? And where should the water level be in the back chamber? Super good question. In your Hello Reef tank, in any all-in-one tank, or even in a tank with a sump, there's only one chamber that's gonna have a consistently changing water height level, and that's the chamber that has the return pump. So absolutely, the ATO sensor has to go in the back right chamber that houses the return pump. If you put it in any other chamber or in the display tank, the water height isn't gonna change at all, but every day the return pump chamber is gonna have less and less water until it runs completely dry, and then you're just kind of out of luck. So how high should the water be? Well, if you look into that rear right chamber, you will see a baffle that comes about three quarters of the way up. I would place the sensor so that it keeps the water line just above that baffle. If you're going on vacation, make sure you test this out the week before you leave to make sure everything's running perfectly before you go. Question number 12. I was looking for a stand for my Hello Reef tank. Which would you recommend? There's one that fits really well. It's the one for the max spec dice all in one tank. I believe it comes in either a white or black, but the dimensions of it are pretty much perfect for the Hello Reef tank. And a lot of Hello Reef users have been using that stand. Remember, you absolutely don't need a stand. For example, take a peek at my tank right back here. It's sitting on a sturdy piece of Ikea furniture and that works just fine. But I can totally get why you would want a stand depending on where you want to put it in the house, the apartment, the school. So check out that max spec dice all in one stand and I'll make sure I put a link in the description below. Question number 13. My peppermint shrimp seems to love the wave maker. Is it safe or should I move it? There also appears to be a shrimp tail stuck in the wave maker. Do shrimp shed? Let's start with the second part first. Yes, shrimp do shed their exoskeletons. Just like hermit crabs, they occasionally have to shed their exoskeletons in order to get bigger. So depending on how much they're eating, your shrimp could shed its exoskeleton every couple weeks or maybe every month. It's really kind of scary the first time you see it because you'll look down into your tank and it looks like there's just a dead shrimp lying on its back or sucked into your wave maker, but it's okay. And typically after it does shed its exoskeleton, it might hide a little bit more for the day or two after because that new exoskeleton hasn't fully hardened yet. Is it bad for that peppermint shrimp to be hanging out near the wave maker? No, not at all. Unless it's like super, super tiny and could get sucked in there, the grates on the outside of the CJ wave maker are gonna keep it out just fine. So don't worry about moving it. You can leave that exoskeleton in the tank, but if it's already sucked into your wave maker, personally, I would just pull it out and throw it in the trash. Question number 14. If I wanna add corals to the tank, do I need to change my lighting? No, you do not. We set up the AI Blade grow light so that it's perfect for anemones, but the spectrum and intensity for anemones is also great for soft corals as well as large polyp stony corals. I wouldn't recommend putting high light corals like small polyp stony corals underneath this light, and I really wouldn't recommend doing that for beginners anyways as they are quite finicky, but the light is already set up perfectly well for a whole bunch of soft and LPS corals. Question number 15. I can hear a vibration from my pump. Is that normal? Yes. There's a difference between AC and DC pumps. AC pumps, just how they use electricity, are going to have a slight vibration, which for some people, they don't even notice it, and other people, it's super annoying. 
Personally, I think it's super annoying. So I actually upgraded my AC pump that came with the Hello Reef kit to an AI Axis 20 and it runs perfectly silently. Now, there are some reasons why your Seed Shea AC pump might be vibrating too much. Just make sure it's not resting against a wall, like pushed all the way against it, because then the vibrations from the pump can vibrate through the entire glass chamber and you can hear it a lot more. So make sure it's centered and not touching the sides. And if it's really super loud, then you can always do a little audio recording or video and send it to the Hello Reef customer service team and they'll let you know whether that's normal or not. Yes, occasionally there are are some pumps out there that might need to be replaced, but the vast majority of them are just fine. CJ makes a good product and there's just a normal tolerance level, which means there's going to be some vibrations with that AC pump. If you want to upgrade yours as well, the Hello Reef kit, we talked about that, but I'll put a link below to the AI Axis 20, which fits perfectly in this system and will turn that vibration into absolutely nothing. Question number 16. I just added my clownfish yesterday and my water is super cloudy today. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. When a new tank is being set up and really even in a more established tank, sometimes you get what are called bacterial blooms. They're usually not dangerous, but can take a while to clear up. The only danger from a bacterial bloom really is all those bacterial are consuming the oxygen. So the animals inside might be struggling a little bit for oxygen. So if you see some sort of white bacterial bloom in your tank, the best thing to do is to increase the surface agitation. So just take your wave maker or your return pump and point it up at the surface so you get a lot of ripples on the water. That should definitely help. You can change out your filter sock a little bit more. You can add in some other different kinds of beneficial bacteria, or you can even do something like a UV sterilizer. But at the end of the day, as long as your fish and your cleanup crew look happy, aren't struggling for any sort of breath, and you have enough of that surface agitation, just give it a few days to a couple weeks and it should clear up and go back to being crystal clear. Question number 17. That's actually it. Click here for another great video from Hello Reef. And until next time, be well and happy reefing, everybody.